Some, some stuff down drawer up. We're gonna put some edge banding on. Uh, this build is gonna not kind of hmm, words. There's a lot to every build, and there's a bunch of boring stuff involved that I won't bore you with, like milling materials. But we're gonna get some edge banding on the bottom part. I'm 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 worried a little because the bottom of the cabinet is going to be ply mixed with oak. And I don't know how that's gonna go. Could be great, could be terrible. We'll find out. Do a live edge front, live edge banding, edge banding. And the old blue tape clamps, making sure I've got good lip on both sides. Now sometimes you can never be too careful marking your material. Because I can very easily lose track of the alignment and where everything's going. So it's marked here and on the sides and over and over and over and over again. can stop me. I'm all the way up. Alright, one profile down. Alright, we are making a profile on the tabletop of our railing. It has this little scoopy thing right here. Something I did before on one of my other pieces. This is how you do it. So I have a sacrificial fence running at an angle. It is clamped in two places and I have it so that the center of the blade, the high point, is just behind this piece. So it is cutting into this fence and you take off a little bit at a time and run it really, really slow. I went ahead and did a test cut to make sure that it was working right. So we're gonna go ahead and put these together. Well. Well, I'm pretty sure that I turned the camera off to record the intro for a TikTok, and then I just did the thing on my TikTok on my phone, and I forgot to re-record it here. So, oh look, it's done. Yay, we made it. All right, we're gonna get a little, little base put on. Thank you. Once we get these clamps in place, Get our center clamps. I think do the front ones and then we'll roll it onto its side. Throw my stuff around. Oh fuck you. So boo-boos happen, they do. And I made one unintentionally and it was my own fault because of I was following my directions which is like I made the thing but I was I was okay so here, here's what I'm getting at let me take you to the back so bottom of the cabinet top of the cabinet this is the back of the cabinet you can see there's a groove running all the way around that was going to accept the back panel it was gonna slide in and that was gonna be that but when I drew it up on SketchUp, I had everything laid out, but the bottom panel, the panel was actually supposed to slide words 
So you see how these shelves are inset? Turns out the bottom one is too. The panel was gonna slide down so I could tack it at the bottom, and that was my thought process when I was doing it. But at the same time, when I was putting in these little grooves, I was like, oh, the bottom and top need it, so I need to do that too. So now, they don't line up. So the panel's gonna sit right here, and this is gonna be on the inside. Am I gonna do anything about it? Nope. Just gonna let it fucking ride. And, time is always of the essence. I need my back panel to slide in before I glue the top on. But as you can see, the top is being glued on. So all I'm gonna do is, because I've already got a groove, once I take all the clamps off and I have the panel, I'm just going to chisel off this extra section. And instead of it just being floating, I'm gonna staple it to the back, which will help. It'll, it'll help improve the overall strength of the cabinet by having that kind of support system back there. Time to assemble some doors. So we are gonna actually go ahead, get the doors glued up, get the panel on in. And uh, when we make our weave, we're just going to make it large and glue it in. Uh, the panel fits snug. I don't really wanna widen it and then have the, the thing I mean, why do I bother talking? Me and words aren't doing so hot. I've done this before. What I mean by this, I mean my door panel weave stitch thing that's gonna go on the front. I did it using, the, uh, did I use veneer? I think I used veneer. Question is, do I have enough of a veneer that is close enough to oak to use, or am I gonna have to try and fucking fight my way into making some veneer. Which you don't want to do. Because it has to be large enough to fit on the panel, but also thick enough that it won't snap just by looking at it. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, well. Would you look at that? But also flexible, so that I can handle it and weave it without it breaking at every given opportunity, like. So after a minor bout of trial and error, I think I figured out the system. So I put my strip down, I glued on these long pieces first, and it just becomes every time one of these ones is sticking up, you just rotate it around to the reverse, and you get yourself a little separator stick. Then you fuck up like I do. This lets me, uh, separate them and get much closer in without trying to do other things because words and talking leads to sometimes the communication of information that can be extracted in a way within your own consciousness to allow you the ability to understand the things that are being said when the words chosen have been spoken. That's kind of how it feels. Now, if my calculations are correct, which they almost never are, this should be the last piece I need for this theoretically. episode of Yes, I Fucked Up Again. I mean, you should probably start bleeping swear words. So, you saw me working on this thing. It looks like it turned out pretty neat, pretty good. Um, except for the fact that I glued it on the wrong side. I was gonna have the smooth side be the interior of the door and glue on top of this because it's not as nice to look at. But in my enthusiasm, here we are.
All right, after a lot of testing and using a whole bunch of mixing and materials, like we went through strips and strips and methods, and we finally found our found our winner, which is right here. This little section and this section. And the method is to use a denatured cut seal coat on everything, then a heavy application of NGR brown, and then red on top. It's going to be kind of a process to get it all done, but it will turn out. And then after all of that, then we get to put like a lacquer or something on it to make it look nice, so. But I'm glad that it's done, now I can start cleaning all this shit up. So one of the things I need to do is build the altar top, which consists of five, six, consists of pieces. In particular, the two sides, the top, and then the, uh, the three bottom pieces, which is the very bottom, the base, the shelf that goes in the middle that's going to draw out, and then the base again that the statue is going to sit on. because I've got a smaller door frame. Generally I'd use a bloom hinge, which one of these things. But they recess in half an inch and they're pretty wide. And I can't use them on these at the moment. So I had to find something else that works and I'm hoping these ones aren't garbage. Because I was using drawer stock material that was much smaller than this opening, I have. I don't know my block. I have some space. So I've got my drawer slides, half inch each on each side. You can see I got a gap right here. So I went ahead and cut out some spacers so it fit. Normally I'd make the drawer, if I was just cutting from uh, material, I'd cut the drawer to fit the opening, the things, the drawer slides, with a little bit of room, but I didn't feel like breaking down more material. I felt like recycling some. So, all right, our drawer slides are installed. I've got some equal shims placed on both sides. I got them just pushed against the wall so they're not gonna move. And we're gonna put our drawer in. All right, so I'm sitting on my shims. I'm going to clamp the drawer face on so that when I pull out, because you always pull out. My piece here, I can butt it up against the drawer stock, the drawer face. So you can see as the drawer starts coming out, mostly because I've got this extra weight on the front, um, it'll want to tip. So we're gonna get it back just enough. We're gonna use a center finding drill bit. install these last two, then we'll take the drawer out and put the ones on in the back. Drawers installed. We're gonna put our drawer face on. And I like to use double-sided tape to get it in place with some shims. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to pre-drill holes in this drawer from the inside. Now you want your holes generally as close to the edge as possible in case your board wants to move out this way. So in this bottom hole, in order to get closer, I had to angle my drill bit this way. When I go to attach my drawer face and I start screwing into it, it's going to pull it this way because my screw is running this way. So this other screw right here is straight and this is this straight one's gonna be the ones I attach to first. 
Ta da! I mean, we'll just put some screws in it. I like using clamps because it helps to ensure it doesn't move, even though there's tape on there, but can't be too safe. so much information um, with everything it's hard to condense everything so this you see here is the bodhisattva statue that was brought over to us by my dad and sister on their visit here you see jeremy here is rinsing all the goodies including a, a ground god with pommel leaves infused water pommel leaves have been used as a tradition over the years to rinse and cleanse away all the impurities. Now before entering the house, Jeremy as the head of the household does talk to the Bodhisattva statue as well as the ground god to introduce our home and our family to them. That way they recognize where they are and guide us to safety, prosperity, wealth, health, etc. Besides burning yourself, what are you doing? I am cooking the food that we are presenting to Bodhisattva because uh, Bodhisattva is a vegetarian, so these are all vegetarian foods. This is a this is a fungi fungus, black wood ear fungus, and this is dried lilies, dried lily, and this is a uh, bean curd. This is kind of like the top layer of tofu when they make it and when it becomes thick they collect it and dry it out to make another food. And this is just some rice noodles or vermicelli noodles. And there's moss I'm about to put in that I haven't strained yet. I probably should strain that. Um, and some veggies. Ta-da! And we'll present that in front of Bodhisattva. Now that 
everything is prepared um, along with the rice and the setup of the altar, it is now time to present to the deities along with incense and candles. The reason for candles is kind of like lighting your own house. Unfortunately, we didn't record the process where Jeremy had headed outside to our fire pit to burn some paper versions of money, clothing, etc. to Bodhisattva and the ground god. And this is the end to the ceremony. It is um, the introduction of our home to our deities and set settled them into their home so that they can now guide us to health, wealth, prosperity, etc. That was oh my god, I'm reading the script! <laughs> I keep staring at the script! It's time to present the head of the house. Blah, 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 blah.